So hey folks, so I have to do a video on this specific topic because it's brought up in the comment section of just about all of my videos. Anytime I talk about like dually versus single rear wheel or diesel versus gas or payload capacities or anything, there's folks on that either message me or they ask me, you know, I have a 2500 or an F250 or 2500 HD and I haul a 18,000 pound fifth wheel without any issue at all. I want to set the proper tone for people who go over the capacity of their truck. Not that trucks can't do it. So that's not the point of this video. The point isn't to say that if you have an F-250, that if you put airbags on it, and if you put helper springs, and if you put Adelief's, and you put thicker joist springs, anything like that, I'm not saying that the truck isn't physically capable of hauling additional weight, or that it's not physically capable of towing more. You could put an aftermarket brake system on your truck that is tenfold better than the factory brakes. You could put better springs on it. You could put stiffer springs. Shoot, you could eliminate the springs and essentially give your truck a boost in its towing capability as well as its payload capability. That doesn't mean that your truck is all of a sudden legally able to carry that weight or legally able to tow that amount of weight. That's the message that I want to make clear. So many times we do modifications to our vehicles and we think those modifications gave us a lot more capability. And it is true, it does give your vehicle more capability, but your vehicle is rated by the manufacturer to legally support a certain amount of weight or to legally tow a certain amount of weight. Much of that's dependent on the tires that are on the truck, on the suspension, on the shocks, on the gear ratio. Several different factors that a lot of people often don't take into account when they're modifying a vehicle. And I'm telling you this because I don't want you to be under any type of false illusion that just because you put a ton of money into enhancing the suspension in the engine of your truck, that all of a sudden it's legally able to carry or tow more weight. You may have an F-150 or a Chevy 1500 or a Ram 1500, and you may tow trailers that are well over the maximum tow capacity of that truck. Or you may put more payload in that truck than it's rated for. By doing so, with modifications, you may not be hurting the truck, but if you get into an accident or if you get pulled over, and they check your weight and your vehicle's overweight, you can be cited for it. If, even if you're not at fault. You know, when I was at the RV dealer the other day and I was doing the recommended trailer for an F-150 review, the owner of that specific RV dealership came out and he made it very clear. There's so many people that pull up to his dealership with, you know, a Chevy 1500 or an F-150 or Ram and all of a sudden want to pull a... 15,000 pound fifth wheel because they know their truck can do it. And he has to tell them, though it may be able to physically do it because you've done some enhancements to it, that does not mean you can legally do it. A lot of people might say, you know, screw the law, I'm going to do it my own way. What I don't understand is how people can be so cavalier about doing things that could potentially endanger other people on the road just to satisfy their own ego. Right? You put a ton of horsepower behind a car, a ton of horsepower behind a truck, you drag race down the street, you drive aggressively, putting your own life at risk, or maybe you're such a good driver that you don't think you're going to put your own life at risk. What if there's other people on the road that shouldn't be at risk just because you decide you want to put more weight on your truck or because you want to tow more? And the way I'm going to reference a lot of this is I had a 2011 F-250 Super Duty. For those of you that don't know, that is the first year of the 2011 through 2016 body style. It had the first generation of the 6.7 liter power stroke. I did absolutely nothing to that engine in terms of modification. But what I did do was a lot of suspension enhancements because I was hauling weight. The suspension enhancements I did to the back of the truck, at first, I swapped the factory Rancho shocks out with Skyjacker M95 monotube shocks. And eventually I moved to the Fox 2.0 performance shocks, which made the ride incredibly firm in the back. It was a pretty harsh ride after installing those shocks. I had also installed Procomp Adelief's. They were the dual leaf spring system on each side. Instead of installing one large, thick, 
leaf spring on each side. It installed two thinner leaf springs on each side, so a total of four leaf springs, two on each side, which also gave the truck an inch and a half lift in the back. After that, I installed the Hellwig big wig sway bar on the back. The F-250 does not come equipped with the sway bar unless you get the camper package. And I didn't opt for that, so I didn't have a sway bar. But the sway bar that I added, the Hellwig Bigwig, is enormous. It was a very, very large sway bar. And then I also added the Timberin SES suspension enhancement system rubber replacement blocks. So they replaced the factory bump stops, which are all of about three and a half, four inches tall, with this six inch tall, incredibly thick, dense, hollowed out piece of rubber that essentially makes contact with the rear block platform sooner, thus giving you extra sway control and weight capacity. And I think the ones I got were supposed to give me like a 5,500 pound total weight capacity. What it helped with was the ability for my truck under extremely heavy load to ride more level. I did a video where I put about two tons of aggregate in the back of my truck and the truck just leveled out because of all the enhancements. The front of the truck, was very similar in the sense that I tried the Skyjacker M95 shocks first, then I moved to the Fox 2.0 shocks, and I had a two and a half inch level on the front. It was a pro comp level on the front because I really didn't want a full lift kit. I didn't want a lifted truck because we haul a travel trailer. So another enhancement I did to the rear suspension that I forgot to mention is I replaced my factory one and three quarter inch lift blocks with F-350 single rear wheel blocks, which are almost four inches tall. They're like three and three quarter inches tall. And that gave my truck a total lift in the back of about three and three quarter inches of lift. Whereas the front of my truck had a two and a half inch Pro Comp lift. So when I was done with everything, my truck had about a two inch rake in the back, which was on par with like a single rear wheel F-350. When I got my truck, it sat perfectly level. So I had no rake at all to it. So anything I added to the front or back would be pretty noticeable. I then installed the Neato Trail Grappler tires. I believe they were 295, 65, 20s, but I'll clarify that. And I'll put the actual tire size on the video here. I was able to haul significantly more weight than the truck was rated to haul because of the enhancements I did. The Neato Trail Grapplers gave me significantly more payload capacity on my tire whereas the suspension enhancements gave me significantly more payload capacity from a suspension perspective. However, it does not mean that my truck was legally able to carry anymore. What it did allow me to do was to put the same amount of weight on the truck that I normally would, but not really experience any type of sagging with the rear suspension. I didn't have to worry about the back end dropping down at all or my headlights pointing up. When we would hitch up our trailer to the back, which was a 36-foot Forest River Vibe, it was a 308 BHS, but total length was about 36 feet. That trailer weighed about roughly 8,500 pounds, fully loaded. And when I transferred about 1,000 pounds of that to the hitch of the truck, the truck maybe dropped an inch. So the only message that I'm trying to deliver in this specific video is to tell you that just because you do enhancements to your vehicle does not mean your vehicle is legally able to carry more. That's it. You may have a Ram 2500 that you're going to go buy a fifth wheel and you say, my truck is more than adequate enough to tow this. I've loaded it up with three or 4,000 pounds of weight before and I should be able to carry it. If that exceeds the specifications of what your truck was rated to tow or carry, you could find yourself in legal issues by going overweight. Driving down the road carrying heavy weight is not one of those areas you just want to say, F it, I'm going to do it my own way. Not only do you pose a safety risk to yourself, your family, and the other families that are on the road, but you can be cited for it. You may hate the cops, you may hate the regulations that are in place, it still doesn't change the fact that if you get pulled over, you can be cited for it, you can even have your vehicle impounded, and the last thing you want to do is find yourself in that situation simply because you ignored the legal ratings that your truck was assigned by the factory. Now, that being said, it is possible that you can have your vehicle re-rated, but the manufacturer has to do that. So let's say you have an F-250 
and you want to haul more weight and pull a larger trailer than what that truck is rated for. You can take your vehicle back to the manufacturer, you can pay whatever it would cost and hope that they would even try to do it and re-rate your truck with new engineered specs based on the enhancements that you do to your vehicle. The likelihood of them doing that, the likelihood of that happening or even being feasible from a financial perspective is zero to none. It would cost you probably more to do that than it would to go out and buy a brand new platinum edition truck. So I don't recommend going that route. If you don't know the ratings of what your truck is legally able to tow and carry, and you're planning on getting a heavy fifth wheel toy hauler, travel trailer, gooseneck, or just towing something exceptionally heavy on a trailer, you better find out what your ratings are because the last thing you want to do is be cited for going over your weight ratings, being illegal, possibly paying huge fines, getting ticketed for it, as well as getting your vehicle possibly impounded. Anyways, I hope this video has been informative. If it has, I'd appreciate it if you like and subscribe. Thank you.